basic introduction to the genetics of chickens. You probably know that some characteristics are inherited while others come about because of environmental factors. In fact, that's an oversimplification because most characteristics are actually a mixture of both. And even if you've never really thought about nature versus nurture, you instinctively know that's true. You know you inherited your skin colour from your parents. But you also know that if your skin is exposed to a lot of sunshine, it goes darker. Your inherited skin colour doesn't change, but the expression of that inheritance is modified by the environment. And if you happen to be well tanned when you have babies of your own, your skin's tan doesn't get reflected in the colour of your baby's skin. You pass on to your children what you inherited, not how that inheritance is currently expressed in you. We see this combination of inheritance and environment in chickens too. A chicken inherits the genetic code for a certain amount of brown coating for its eggs. This doesn't mean that every egg the hen lays will be always exactly the same colour. Check out a couple of my videos about egg colour and eggs laid by older hens. But a hen that lays white eggs will never start laying brown eggs because she doesn't have the genetic background to do so. Let's just define a few genetic terms with reference to chickens. These are not necessarily dictionary definitions, but I hope they'll explain what the words mean. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. In genetics, we begin with DNA. You'll be familiar with DNA as a very long, thin molecule with a structure like a twisted ladder. The sides or uprights of the ladder are made of phosphate and a sugar, deoxyribose, and the rungs are each a pair of nucleotides. Together, the arrangement of these nucleotides make up the DNA code, which is interpreted by the cell as instructions about how to grow and behave. The DNA inside the cell is organised into chromosomes, and in fact into pairs of chromosomes, because we inherit one of each pair from our parents. Humans have 46 chromosomes, that's 23 pairs. But chickens have 78 chromosomes, that's 39 pairs. Although the DNA code continues right along the whole length of each DNA molecule, we pay most attention to some sections of the DNA molecule that carry specific genes of interest. A gene is the basic unit of inherited information. It's a section of DNA that codes for a particular inherited thing. For example, the shape of a chicken's comb. The shape of a chicken's comb can demonstrate some other genetic terms. Let's start with a chicken that has the classic single comb. This is the type of comb that chicken's ancestors had. It's the type of comb you would draw if you were drawing a chicken. And my leghorns have single combs. Wyandots, on the other hand, have a different shaped comb. It's called a rose comb. Comb shape is inherited. Just as with most genes, each chicken has two genes for comb shape. They inherited one from each parent. A purebred leghorn rooster will pass on one gene for a single comb to his offspring. And a purebred leghorn hen will also pass on one gene for a single comb. So the purebred leghorn chicken will have two genes for a single comb and will express these by actually having a single comb on her head. When a chicken or a human or any other animal has two identical genes, like two genes for a single comb, we use the word homozygous, which means two genes the same. A purebred leghorn chicken with a single comb is homozygous for the single comb gene. In a similar way, a purebred Wyandotte chicken will have inherited one rose comb gene from her mother, the Wyandotte hen, and one rose comb gene from her father, the Wyandotte rooster, and so will be homozygous for the rose comb gene. I can't draw a rose comb very well, so let's just use the standard nomenclature for the rose comb gene, which is a capital R. 
Now what happens if we cross our purebred Wyandotte chicken with a purebred leghorn? Our new baby chicken will get one gene for comb shape from its mother and one gene for comb shape from its father. One parent is the purebred Wyandotte. She's homozygous for the rose comb gene, so when she passes a gene onto her baby chicken, the only gene she can pass on is the rose comb gene, the capital R. And the other parent is the purebred leghorn. He is homozygous for the single comb gene, so when he passes on a gene to the baby chicken, the only gene he can pass on is the single comb gene, which, as it happens, is usually represented by a little letter R. So we know that our baby chicken has one rose comb gene and one single comb gene. But what is the shape of the comb on the baby chick's head? The same as mum? The same as dad? Something in between? In fact, the baby chicken's actual comb shape will be a rose comb. And the reason is that the gene for rose comb is what's called a dominant gene. Dominant just means the gene will be expressed even if there is only one copy of it. Although the purebred Wyandotte had two copies of the rose comb and our baby chick has only one copy, the dominant rose comb gene expresses itself and the comb on the chick's head will be a rose comb, just like mum's. The single comb gene is what's called a recessive gene. It doesn't manage to express itself on the baby's comb shape unless it is present in homozygous form, which we know means two copies the same. We use the clue of the capital and lowercase letters to denote this dominant or recessive quality of the gene. The capital letter is usually the dominant one, and the matching lowercase letter is the alternative gene that affects the same characteristic, in this case comb shape, but that can only express itself if it's present in homozygous form. Our baby chick isn't homozygous. It doesn't have two copies of the same gene. It has one of each type of gene. In human and animal genetics, we would say that the baby chick is heterozygous. But in chickens, we often say that the baby chick is split for the single comb gene, meaning the baby has a gene for a single comb, but that gene is hiding under the dominant rose comb gene expression. So that's a basic introduction to some genetic terms. It gets more complicated, and it gets more fun, as well as more useful. I'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching.